Hello, and thank you for tuning into this webinar. In today's session, we will be talking about how to create anti-spam bypass rules in Office 365 that are more restrictive than normal and therefore more secured. I often see customers define anti-spam and anti-phishing policies in Office 365 using the options available within these tools. This is fantastic to see being done in the name of security. Eventually though, an email or two or three or more will be sent into the organization and be identified and captured as spam. Without fully researching or understanding why these emails are identified as spam, an administrator will add the sender domain to the trusted senders list within the policy. This effectively allows the sender to bypass some of the email security filters. This gets the job done, of course, but unfortunately, it starts to open the security door into your organization. What if you define one of these rules to trust the email address of a sender or that of an entire domain. Then, what if an attacker starts to spoof that domain or sender's email address? The email will likely then be allowed into the environment and delivered to the inbox where a user may click on an embedded link that's malicious, giving the attacker a window into your environment. By creating an exchange transport rule, you can define the email sender address, along with other variables, such as the sender IP address and even a keyword or phrase in the email subject or body. Let's walk through how to do this in a demonstration environment I have set up. Let's first take a look at a typical Exchange Bypass rule using the Exchange Admin Center. I'm logged in under an admin account to the admin portal for Office 365. From here, I'll click on Show All, and I'll open the Exchange Admin Center. That will spawn this new tab over here into the Exchange Admin Center where I'll click first on Protection and then on Spam Filter. From here, I have a single Spam Filter set up by default. I'll click on Edit and then I'll click on the Allow List. This is typically where an administrator for Office 365 would enter an allowed sender or an allowed domain. Let's go ahead and create our Exchange Transport rule. From the spam filter area, let's go down the left hand side and click on mail flow. Click on the plus sign and then go down to bypass spam filtering. From here, we'll define all of our variables. We'll give it a name and let's start to define our variables. We'll apply this rule if the sender equals this person. From here, I'll enter my email address and we'll check the name. Now that it's added, let's click on OK, and we can see that it's defined. We want to define another variable though, so let's add a second condition. And here, we'll focus on the IP address. We'll go down to Sender, and then IP address from here. Let's go ahead and enter a single fictitious IP address for the purposes of this demonstration. Click on the plus button over here to add it into the list. And of course, you can add multiple IP addresses in here or ranges if needed. Click on OK, and now we've got both of our conditions set. If the conditions are met, let's define the spam confidence level. Here, it's already been selected. We want to add another action item to our list. And that action is going to be to modify the message properties so we can more easily identify a message that has been triggered by this rule. So from here, We'll go to Modify Message Properties, set a message header, and then we'll enter text to look for and text to change it to. In the message header, we are going to look for a specific variable and we're going to change it to something more custom so we can more easily identify a message that has been triggered by this rule. So let's go ahead and define our variable that we are going to look for. And now let's define what we want the variable to be set to. We'll say OK. You can see there are additional action items and other options to define within the rule. Here, we'll keep it as is, except for perhaps the comments. You want to have a record of who put this rule in, on what date, and 
If you have a change control system for a change that's been approved, you probably have a number to associate it with this change. Go ahead and enter that in as well. Now that we're done, we'll click on Save and activate the rule. Now all that is left is to ask the external user to send an email to someone within your organization. Thank you for watching this webinar. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comments section below and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.